Welcome to day three of trigonometry. In the past couple of lessons, we've been using trig on right triangles only. Today, we're going to show you how to use trig on triangles that are not right triangles. And the way you do that is you use the law of sine and cosine. And in just a second, I'm going to tell you what those laws are. But first, we're going to talk about when you use which one. And so if you are given three sides of a triangle, then you are going to use the law of cosines. If you are given two sides and the included angle, then you are also going to use the law of cosines. If you are given two sides and a non-included angle, then you're going to use the law of sines. And if you are given one side and any two angles, then you are going to use the law of sines. Me personally, and take this with a grain of salt, I have never memorized these rules. For me, the law of sines is much easier than the law of cosines. So I always start by saying, do I have enough information to use the law of sines? If my answer is yes, then I use it. If my answer is no, then I reluctantly go to the law of cosines. So if you try one and it doesn't work, the other one will work. So you don't necessarily have to memorize these specific rules. But if you are the kind of person who really enjoys having hard and fast rules, there they are for you. So let's kick it off with the law of sines. Again, now we're moving on to triangles that are not right triangles. And the law of sines is simply a proportion. And it states that the sine of A over side A equals the sine of B over side B and the sine of C over side C. And you won't set it up with all three of these. You'll usually use two of them and solve for the missing piece. And just a quick reminder how a triangle works and how we label a triangle. Um, let me get a triangle that's not a right triangle. So if I have this triangle here, if this is angle A, then this is side A. Right? Side A is going to be opposite angle A. So if this is angle B, this will be side B. And if this is angle C, this will be side C. The capital letter refers to the vertex refers to the point, and the lowercase letter refers to the side. Okay, so angles are opposite their sides that have the same letter. All right, let's use it. So it tells me to draw triangle RST and mark it with the given information. It's a really good idea in these cases to draw your triangles because otherwise you start to get really confused. So I have triangle R. S, T. R is 32 degrees, S is 47 degrees, and um, side S, which will be opposite angle S, is 18, and it wants me to find little r. Okay, in order to use law of sines, all I need is an angle and the side opposite it. I've got that, so this would definitely be a law of sines problem. So it will be the sine of 47 over 18, equals the sine of 32 over r. And I'm looking for r. So I'm going to solve by cross multiplying. I get r sine 47 equals 18 sine 32. Divide both sides by sine 47. So I will get r equals 18 sine 32 divided by sine 47. I can put this directly in my calculator. I just need to be very careful how I do it. So let's break out our calculators and talk about how we do this. If my calculator wants to cooperate. All right, that's better. I got my calculator to work. Okay, so I'm going to type in 18, and then I'm going to put sine 32. It is absolutely critical at this point that you close these parentheses. If you don't do that, you will get this problem wrong. And then we are divided by sine 47. This one, you don't have to close parentheses, but it's always a good idea to do it anyway although it didn't happen. Okay, and you hit enter and you find out that R is approximately 13.04. 
this tells us to round to the nearest tenth, so we would round down to 13.0. And that's how I get my answer. All right, let's try it one more time, just to make sure you've got it. So again, I'm going to draw my triangle. Try and draw it smaller so we have more room to work. And again, I've got R, I've got S, and I've got T. So little s, the side opposite angle s, is 42. Little t, the side opposite angle t, is 29. And angle s is 63. And this time, the thing that I'm looking for is I am looking for the measure of angle t. Okay, again, I have an angle and the side opposite it, so I can go ahead and use law of sines. So the sine of 63 over the side opposite it, 42, is equal to the sine of t over the side opposite it, 29. Again, I'm going to cross multiply and solve. So cross multiply these guys together, 29 sine 63 equals 42 sine t. Divide by 42. All right, so those 42s cancel each other out, leaving a sine t. This time I'm looking for an angle. Whenever I'm looking for an angle, I'm going to use the inverse. So this is where it gets interesting. t is going to equal the inverse of all of this. So 29 sine 63 over 42. And I can type all of that into my calculator. I just have to be very, very careful. So let's do that. All right, so I'm going to push second sign to give me my inverse. That opens the parentheses that are these big parentheses right here. So I'm going to take 29 times sine 63. This is where it's critical that I close my parentheses. And then I'm going to divide by 42. And then I need to close the parentheses that symbolize the second set of parentheses over here. So close those parentheses. And I hit enter. And I find out that it is 37.96 degrees. This tells me to find the value to the nearest tenth. So 37.96 to the nearest tenth would be 38.0 degrees. And I must put my degree marking. And that is my answer. And that's how you use law of sines. In this case, we were finding a side. And in this case, we were finding an angle. Plug it in, solve your missing piece. It's that simple. Be sure to always draw the triangle first so you can see what you're dealing with. Moving on to our next problem. Let me go ahead and draw my triangle really fast. So I have RST. Go ahead and label it. R S T, the measure of angle R is 40, the measure of angle S is 89, and side T is 4.8. Now in order to use law of sines, I need to know an angle and the side opposite it. I don't know that here, but I can know it. All I need to do is add these two together and subtract them from 180 to find my missing angle. When I do that, I find out that it is 51 degrees. So now I have enough information to use the law of sines. And what I need to find is R, so I need to find this piece right here. So now I go ahead and set it up. So the sine of 51 over 4.8 equals the sine of 40 over R. I would like you to solve for R. So please go do that and come back when you have an answer. Hit pause now. To the nearest tenth, r is 4.0. If you don't know how I got that, you need to ask about that in class. Looking at our next problem, so again, I'm going to draw my triangle. And again, I have rst. I'm getting a little sick of rst, but oh well. So r is 46, s is 85, and t is 17. We are looking for s. I would like you to solve this problem in its entirety. So go ahead and do that. Come back when you have an answer. Hit pause now. 
you should have gotten that S equals 22.4. And one of the ways you can check to see whether or not your answer seems reasonable is remember, this is a proportion. So if this angle is smaller, this side should be smaller than whatever I get for S. And sure enough, it is 22.4. Over here, this proportion, this angle 51 was greater than 40, so 4.8 should be bigger than whatever I get for R, and 4.8 is bigger than 4.0. So that's just one way to kind of keep an eye on whether or not you are on the right track. Now I have a question that says solve triangle ABC. If A equals 15, C equals 18, and the measure of angle C equals 68 degrees. Well, that's a weird way of saying it. What it means is you need to find all the missing pieces of ABC. That's what solve ABC means. So if we draw a triangle ABC and we label it, A is 15, C is 18, and the measure of angle C equals 68. Then what you need to do is you have to find the measure of angle A, the measure of angle B, um, side B, and that's it. So you need to find these three pieces. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, the easiest thing to find right off the bat is the measure of angle A, because we know the side opposite angle A. So we're going to take the sine of 68 over 18, and we are going to set that equal to the sine of A over 15. Cross, multiply, and solve. And I'm going to get that A equals the inverse sine of um, 15 times sine 68 divided by 18. So I skipped some steps there. I can do that because I'm a genius. If you need to go step by step, please make sure you do that so that you don't make any errors. All right, and we punch that into our calculator, and we get that the measure of angle A is about 51 degrees. Well, now that I know that A is 51 degrees, I can just add these two together and subtract them from 180 to find the measure of angle B. So the measure of angle B is going to be 61 degrees. All right, so then all I need to do is find side B. So again, I need to set up a proportion. And here's my 61 degrees. I'm looking for B. And I can pick either any pair that I know. I'm going to go back to the original pair that I started with just in case I made a mistake. Not that I would make any mistakes, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go with the information I was given rather than the information that I found. So the sine of 68 over 18 equals the sine of 61 over B. I need you to solve that and tell me what the measure of B is. So go ahead and do that and come back and check your answer. Hit pause now. All right, it is a side length, so we are going to go with the nearest tenth, because that's what the directions tell me anyway, 17.0. Technically, I should have done both of these degrees to the nearest tenth, but oops, I didn't pay attention. Sorry, but I'm the teacher, so I can get away with that. You, you can't.